Hello, mysterious person behind the screen, and welcome back to our Spider-Man audio commentaries once again with Isaac. Hello. Uh, and this time we are starting the Andrew Garfield duology, I guess you'd call them, uh, with 2012's The Amazing Spider-Man. So, without further ado. If you'd like to sync this up with the Blu-ray copy of The Amazing Spider-Man, uh, put the film to the start and press play in three, two, one, go. I'll admit, I haven't seen this film in a while, but I, I remember still liking it quite a lot. I mean, I might have mentioned before that when I did, when I saw this on Sky Movies, I think in 2013, um, it did rekindle my love for Spider-Man. After watching this, I realised, you know what, I used to love Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, this is a film that uh, I think has... It's undergone such a mixed uh, critical reception over the years. Like it, it, when it came out, I think everyone loved it, and then people were kind of dying on it a few years after. And now I think people might be back to kind of appreciating what it was trying to do. Um, yeah, definitely. And I, I, I certainly like it a lot. I think, uh, as we'll discuss over the course of the commentary, I think the best stuff in it is the um, is the is the quiet humor moments. Really, I think. This, yes, definitely. It, yeah, I think this is at its weakest when uh, it's kind of falls victim to the studio stuff. Funnily enough, the stuff that was kind of forced yeah, in by definitely. studio. Yeah, the, as you said, the human moments in this are great. I mean, it's exemplified through the relationships between the characters, like Peter and Gwen, uh, Peter and Uncle Ben, Peter and Aunt May, mm. and um, uh, even Peter and Doctor Connors. But um, I mean, some have argued it does take itself a bit too seriously for a Spider-Man film, and yeah, I can see where they're coming from. Yeah. But um, yeah, I couldn't really see a lot of the um, uh, '60s dialogue from, say, Spider-Man One working in this. <laughs> oh, definitely not. I mean, this is a response, um, and it's a very clear response to stuff like the Dark Knight trilogy, because it, it's yeah, it's, definitely. It, 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 I, I do think it is darker than it should be. But it's also, I, I think it's an interesting tone that it strikes, and I think I would have liked to have seen this kept up for the sequel. Yeah, definite. There's quite a few people have argued the sequel actually feels more like a Spider-Man film because it does have a brighter colour palette, whereas, mm. I mean, I'd argue this, even during the night scenes, they're still quite colourful. There's a lot of, like, reds and blues in it, which does remind me a lot of, say, The Force Awakens. Yeah, same, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it does... And to be honest, um, people have criticised the lizard in this for being too surreal for this film, but the thing is, I never saw this as a realistic Spider-Man film. I just saw it as kind of like an updated Spider-Man film, where something surreal as a giant lizard man could happen, so it was never yeah. too out of place for me. Yeah, me neither. I think it's... I mean, for me, I think those the sections with the lizard are the weakest parts of the film, but that again, that's just because of the the studio kind of nonsense that went on with it because less apparent than Spider-Man 3 for sure but that it's in a similar way to Spider-Man 3 there was a lot cut out of this that um yeah would have blended the lizard stuff and the the, the quieter stuff a lot better yeah cuz i think um and um i don't mean this as any offense to mark webb but i think with this film and definitely the second one i think because he hadn't this was what his second and third films that he ever yeah. directed. I think um, the studio interference is way more noticeable because he's probably easier to control. Whereas someone like mm. Raimi, who had been working, say, longer than Mark Webb, would have stood up for himself and said, "No, we can't do this. It's not making any sense. No, I want to make a film better than the last one." Yeah. Whereas, yeah, yeah, Webb, I think, would have been easier to control. Kind of like with. Um, the soul kinds and richard donner and richard lester <laughs> that's a very good point if you, yeah if you compare and contrast their their relationships yeah and i think if you look at because the, the film that mark webb did before this was 500 days of summer which is what genuinely is one of my favorite films and if you watch that film oh nice yeah if you watch that film you can see that he was kind of a perfect choice for spider-man but for a quieter spider-man 
and he in those human moments yeah. in this he really brings that and he excels in those little quiet moments and that's what i love about this film and why i think oh man if we lived in a perfect world like mark webb could have made a really small scale um yeah. very quiet human spider-man film and it would have been fantastic and that's like i said it's the stuff i like in this um yeah kind yeah. of on the same level as um uh, maybe shazam which is quite yeah they're a film in that cinematic universe dc it's it's very small scale and not very big or grand or groundbreaking and mm. yeah we could have gotten that but unfortunately sony saw dollar signs in their eyes when because this was same year as avengers so yeah cinematic universe <laughs> and um yeah a lot of people do find it hard to swallow that um, someone like andrew garfield would be bullied and picked on and yeah i can i can agree yeah. but it does make me appreciate his performance more because it's like um it's almost like he's thinking yeah no one would pick on me so i've got to kind of try even harder to be a bit more believable yeah and, um again it's a nice update from the first film whereas in spider-man one you know he toby Maguire's peter parker couldn't hold a conversation to save his life with a girl yeah it's a bit different girls will talk to him but they won't date him <laughs> yeah th this is a different kind of outcast teenager this is a different kind yeah. of uh, it, it's a more uh, modern take i think and i don't i don't know because if you actually watch the film i've only just picked up on this now flash only kind of picks on him when he, yeah, he, he he only picks on him when kind of peter goes against him you kind of get the yeah. sense that these guys would be friends if peter went along with it like just then with the whole yeah take the picture take the picture he only punched yeah. him then when he said no i'm not doing that so i yeah it, i don't know I, and the whole skateboarding thing everyone's like oh they made peter parker into a skateboarder and like uh, i don't i don't really have a problem with it it's never really bothered me. I don't have um, too much of a problem with it either, now. Yeah. Just trying to imagine Tobey Maguire on a skateboard if they did that <laughs> for the first film. Yeah. I mean, funnily enough, there's a lot of um, similarities, I think, between Andrew Garfield's Peter and the, the Peter of the Ultimate Comics, um, in that they're both quite... Uh, not arrogant but they they have quite a, a short fuse at times and they're not yeah it's, we see later on that andrew gets very i keep calling him andrew but th this this peter <laughs> gets gets very like short with uncle ben later and everything kind of he, he it's fair to say he has some anger issues and that's very similar to, to ultimate peter so. yeah i mean to be honest um it's hard to buy a 29 year old is still in high school <laughs> yeah he's 29 <laughs> yeah no it's um i mean they're quite lucky because andrew garfield does have kind of a youthful looking face so he does yeah he still looks nearly a decade later he still looks pretty young now <laughs> I, I i think his performance is youthful as well i think he's got a very youthful yeah. performance it, it's a very I, I i said it before i think out of the three live action spider-man we've had he's the best actor that we've had like just performance wise yeah. i think he's the best out of the three i'd agree yeah mm. I think he's he's phenomenal in these films, and he's he's so in the weaker moments he just lifts them up. Um, it's it's just such a shame the the fate of this series really just for him. Yeah. Yeah, Martin Sheen he does look like an old. Uh, he does look like Andrew Garfield in fifty years time. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, I I I I quite like Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben. I think he he's really good. He's really world. good. Yeah. And I guess this film, the the problems sort of start, like, I, I kind of like all this because it's different to the Raimi films. It's different. It's not exactly the same, you know. But the problems yeah. start later on when they kind of, they're so, because they have to remake the origin, they're kind of so influenced by what Raimi did 10 years before this. So we get the whole, the, the um, I missed the part where that's my problem, is recreated <laughs> with the whole, not my policy thing yeah it's the same beats and that's when it gets that's when problems i think start to show up because all of this is so different 
And something I've kind of noticed on uh, rewatch with uh, with these two films is that um, they may seem to have been going for um, a, a Spider Man who has to learn to be grateful for what he for what he has because um, yeah, it's, it's highlighted more upon in the second one that um, Aunt May says you're idolizing your dad who you never knew and you're just ignoring basically me yeah. who has to do everything for you and. It, I don't think it was realised to its full potential, but that's a pretty good message for a Spider-Man film. So, because mm. he is an abandoned kid and he tries to make up his own fantasy, but he tries, but he has to learn to be grateful for what he has. Yeah, I think that's a great route to go down. Like a lot of things in the, in this era of of Spider-Man on film, this duology, it's not realised to its full potential, but it's um, yeah, I just. I love a, I love a lot of what they tried to do there with Peter's character. Um, yeah, and he's uh, people pointed this out to me recently, and I never noticed it before. He is um, Peter's dressed here in the same costume as uh, Peter wears in the Spectacular Spider-Man animated series. Um, oh, nice. It's pretty much the same outfit, like with the blue sh- uh, shirt and stuff. It's it's, it's just, uh, I don't know if that was intentional, but it's 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 weird. That is pretty- <laughs> That is pretty cool, yeah. yeah. And of course, they put glasses on him because oh, he's not geeky enough. Put glasses on him. <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Mm. Wasn't the mystery of his parents going to be resolved in this film? But it was cut. Yeah, like that, like many things. This was because this was um, marketed as the untold story. Um, I, yeah. I vividly remember like uh, seeing posters which had the that awesome poster with like Peter in the shadows and his uh, the, he was like in the corner on the wall and the shadow cast the shadow of a spider and uh, it said the untold story below it and it this kind of delivers on that. But um, it was moved to the second one, and the second one kind of goes in its own direction. And yeah, I mean, we we have more released footage from this than we do, say, Spider Man Three. It's just yeah, frustrating true. that it's not in the here. Release the release the web cut. That's what I say. Yeah, the, honestly, I would. Yeah, I'd I'd love Mark Webb to kind of go in and maybe rework these films. Um, probably the second one even more so. Um, Definitely, yeah. Hmm. I like another the- difference. I I yeah, was just sure. gonna say another difference I like between this Peter Parker and Maguire's Peter Parker is that um, you know, kind of the. Um, what the alternate path would be if they didn't choose a life of responsibility. Mm. Maguire would become a physical bully, definitely, yeah. as we see with the wrestling match. And here, because um, when he's with Dr. Connors, he probably he might have used his intelligence for evil. You never know. Yeah, no, probably, probably. Um, yeah, because I, I like, that's what I was going to say, actually. I like the fact that this really emphasizes the inventor element. Um, like he's got that little contraption on his door and there's all sorts of gadgets around his room and stuff so yeah probably he would have who knows what would have happened if he had gone a different route you know I just realised this film is the final appearance of Uncle Ben in a live action film because he's Mm. he's not in the second one, I don't think, and he's yeah. yet to make an appearance in the MCU. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know everyone's like, "Oh, Tobey Maguire should play him in the MCU," <laughs> which um, <laughs> that would be brilliant. It would be kind of cool. Yeah, I quite like to see it. I mean, it might be get thrown out the window if he turns up in No Way Home, but uh... <laughs> with great power comes great pizza time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, when I'm searching for something, I totally use Bing. Bing, yeah. 
<laughs> the most, uh, you know, legend has it every time you search Google in the Bing search engine, engine, somebody dies. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, because <laughs> it's, it's just yeah. I really like the look of the Oscorp Tower. It's almost like a a beehive. Norman Osborn mm. is the queen bee. Everyone else who works in there is literally the worker bees. It's really cool. It's cool. Weren't um weren't they in negotiations with Disney to get Avengers Tower put in the background of this? I'm sure. I think, something oh, happened. I thought it was the other way around. Like it Oscorp Tower was going to be in Oscorp Tower was going to be in the Avengers. Might have been the uh, other way around. Yeah. Well, yeah, they've now conf- Well, yeah, um, just realised they've now confirmed that that uh, kid that Tony saves in Iron Man Two is a young Peter Parker. Yes, they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which does raise a few questions because it looks like he lives in the poor part of New York. How did he afford to go to a Stark <laughs> event like that and see the most powerful yeah. man literally on Earth? It's best not to think about it, to be honest. Yeah. And, uh, and there's also that meme, like, um, have you ever noticed that with each Spider-Man reboot, the Aunt Mays get younger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, this reminds me actually seeing this kind of area the uh, the tie-in game that was released for this was actually a sequel to this film um oh, okay. so the story uh i haven't played it in a few years but the story was like oscorp was kind of doing further like dodgy experiments on animals and that's uh, things go wrong and there's like a funnily enough a pandemic released onto new <laughs> york so um that's how they they do versions of like rhino and um scorpion and vermin and stuff um obviously it was before the second film came out but uh yeah it's pretty cool and and there's there's a section where you have to go and break kirk connor's out of prison because you kind of need his you need his help to kind of sort things out and it's it was a pretty good continuation of this actually completely contradicted by the second film of course but um but yeah it was interesting it's kind of alternate universe amazing spider-man 2 I really do like Reese Ifans, I hope I'm saying that right. Yes, as yeah. um, Dr. Connors. He's great. Um, I do find it a shame Sam Raimi never did the lizard in his films because I think he would have given it a real horror yeah. edge. A, a definite Jekyll and Hyde feel. Would have been great. I, I feel sorry for Dylan Baker, man. Like He, he was built up for two films that he was the, you yeah. know, wearing that, uh, you know, having the, the no arm thing, you know built up for two films and he never got to to do it yeah because it's so funny to me spider-man 4 they plan to use the vulture mm. uh, gets cancelled amazing spider-man 3 one of the villains was the vulture yeah i think by the time they got to homecoming we're like we're using a fucking vulture <laughs> and also i am gonna come out and say it here i think this duology has the best romance for a spider-man film I agree. I absolutely agree. I think these two are sensational together. Of course, it helps that they were dating in real life. Um, yeah, true. So that their, their chemistry is just... Every time these two are together, it's just electric, and it's just wonderful to watch. Um, I do like how... Yeah, and um, I'm glad it's not... Um, with these two films, it's not damaged their careers in any way, because they're still working. And Yeah, um, yeah. Hasn't Emma Stone won an Oscar now for La La Land? I think it was La La Land. Yeah, she's um, she's doing great. And um... Andrew Garfield has also did he get nominated for an Oscar? Yeah, no, I could what, be wrong. What was that? Was that Hacksaw Ridge? Um, I think it might have was. Been, yeah, because he was brilliant in that. Um, yeah. yeah, he seems to be doing a bit more small scale films, isn't he now? Yeah, which. Uh, Fair enough to him. It's clearly the failure of these films 
hasn't damaged his career in any way, which I'm yeah. I'm happy. I'm just I'm happy for him for that because he's so good, and I'm just every time I I watch these films and they kind of they come to an end and I, I always just come away from them going poor Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Yeah, kind of like um, he's the Timothy Dalton and Colin Baker of yeah. um, Spider Man. Yes, definitely. Did, did two seasons slash two films, and we all felt they were never given a gr- a better chance. Yeah, and, and it's really true. It really is true. It's it's why you know um so much. I love Toby and the Raimi films. I'm a Raimi fanboy here. If any Spidey was going to come back, it I'd be more interested in seeing Andrew come back than Toby. Because I just yeah. feel like Andrew just wasn't given that chance. Yeah, but don't forget, he's not in the fucking film. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the I werewolf. Like I'm not the fucking werewolf. werewolf. I'm not the werewolf. I'm not the fucking werewolf. <laughs> I do like how they kill two birds with one stone here, introduce Oscorp, and also have it be the place where the spider bites Peter. Yeah, I quite like that, yeah. And it's proper grim as well when he goes into that room and all the spiders like kind of fall on him. It's proper like, ugh. Oh. Though the score reminds me of Ang Lee's Hulk here. <laughs> it's just so so similar to the Danny Alphams music in that. And yeah, sadly, this is James Horner's final film, isn't it? Yeah, he was he was meant to do the second one, but he read the script and thought it was shit. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so he did. So he didn't do it. So, um, yeah, he called it awful and just yeah. I'm out. Which I mean, fair enough to him. Fair enough to that. I, I think the score is brilliant in this. It's so uh, yeah, different and unique. And um, I think the the main theme for Spider Man is great. It's a really good theme. Yeah, it's such a shame that he died in a plane accident, didn't he? I believe so, yeah. I believe so. It was um, very sad. Such a shame. He was a great composer. Mm, yeah. And you can kind of hear his, um, cues here and there from aliens in this, I noticed. Um, yeah, he's, he's he's a great composer, and it's very sad that uh, what happened and everything. Shame about Doctor Rather because he just disappears in this film, doesn't he? Yeah. You last see yeah. him in the car, and you don't know whether the lizard killed him or not. But there is a again, there's a deleted scene where I think he says to Peter, "Do you think what happened to you was an accident or he, something yeah, like that?" There's a deleted scene. He comes back. I believe he he tranquilizes Peter, or he injects him with something, yeah. or tases him, or something. Basically, uh, incapacitates him, and and yeah, he was a bigger character, and. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of deleted scenes in this, unfortunately. I mean, yeah. at least we got them released. That's, that's yeah, it's one thing, but... Yeah, because there's another scene after the school fight where he finds Connors looking really scared and petrified, and it yeah. kind of suggests that Connors is not in full control of the lizard. Yeah, and you see a bit of that in the final film, like when he wakes up like in the water and stuff, but it's not, like, fully explored um, yeah I love the flashes of the spider symbol uh, in the train really cool who goes to sleep on a subway they don't... yeah <laughs> the journey only takes you two minutes <laughs> oh we're about to get well... the um, the amazing race change man <laughs> 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 the guy the guy who changes ethnicities between shots <laughs> Just reminded of the unusual suspect when he cuts that clip of Tom and Jerry. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> this guy's like, get your hand off her. You've just put a beer on his head. Yeah. You don't exactly have the moral high ground. <laughs> I do like this because he's not trying to hurt them. He's just um, being clumsy. Yeah. It's kind of something that Peter Parker would do. He's like, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's nice. I like it. This is this is all great. And I just, yeah. Yeah, here it is. He picks up... Th- 
this guy picks up the board. He's about to hit him. Yep. This is... <laughs> yeah, because it's yeah. two different guys, but it's just a really quick, sloppy edit. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... Yeah, it's... Because I think you can just about see the other guy on the floor, but the way it's edited yeah. is just... It's... Yeah. It's one of those things that once somebody points it out, you can't unsee it. I know what he was dreaming about. He was dreaming about his past incarnation. Yeah. <laughs> really with this joint. How did you go this? <laughs> Pizza time. I missed the point, but that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, like, if if your son came home like this, you would absolutely say, no, he's on drugs. They, 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 yeah. they, they go... And he's got, a, he's got a huge appetite as well. He's like, yeah. I'm really hungry. Yeah, and they're, they're like, oh, drinking? No, that's... The, if he was drunk, that's not what, the, what he'd be like. He's on something. <laughs> yeah. Sweating profusely, uh, weird reactions, and... Um... Immense appetite. <laughs> yep. Sally Field is great as Aunt May as well. I mean, she she's not spoken very kindly of I think the second film, but um, really, yeah, she said something. I'll see if I can find the quote for next week. But uh, she she says something like you you can't something to the effect of you can't polish a turd, or or, or oh. so, something <laughs> something like that. But yeah, I'll find the quote next time. But it's um, I think she's great as well. She's a she's great as Aunt May. Yeah, I just, it, 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 ultimately, I just think it was a weird... I like what they do with retelling the origin. Like, this is a really haunting visual here with the, the web coming from his neck and everything. Um, Reminds me of the TV movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he pulls the wire out. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's pretty, it's, yeah. Um, so I like, like, a lot of the visuals they do with that. I just... It, it, it just seems a bit redundant to go through all of this origin again when the previous incarnation, cinematic incarnation, was only... Um, what five years before this? Um, yeah, I do like minds. how. Um, yeah, I do like how this is portrayed as a bit more. S- these new powers are a bit more scary for Peter. Yeah. Whereas in the first one, it was definitely more for laughs, like go whip, fly. Yeah. Woo-hoo! The first one, there's a sense of wonder to it, whereas this one is like, yeah. what is happening? You know. I know people hate the needle drops in this film because there's a lot of like um, very late 2000s, early 2010s indie uh, songs yeah. that, that are dropped in it. I, I again, it just feels like it's Mark Webb's style and it, it fits perfectly with this Peter's personality, and it it, it mm. just um, and it feels so personal because this is kind of what teenagers would be like. Um, granted, I'll give it to you later on that the the Coldplay thing. Like so many people take the piss out of the Coldplay bit because it's like the film stops to to give us a Coldplay music video for two minutes. But um, yeah, is that when he's um, swinging on the chains? When, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. yeah um, that looks like a Cloves advert. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very much an excuse because uh, our Coldplay assigned to the soundtrack, so we got to play their song. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it, it doesn't bother me. I think it, it it's just it does just feel like Mark Webb style and. I like the keys t- uh, sticking to his fingers as well. It's very cool. Yeah, that's good. It's a, it's a fun moment. I just want to know how he repairs everything. <laughs> yeah. He broke a lot of stuff. It's the alarm clock, especially he smashes it. And I get the sense that this this Peter kind of likes to march to the beat of his own drum because you can see there he's kind of cut holes in his sleeves to kind of wear it like uh, in that particular way and stuff. And it's um, yeah, he, he, that's what I mean. He's a different kind of outcast. 
he's an outcast that yeah. is kind of like you say marches marches to the beat of his own drum and um yeah seems a bit more eccentric as well yeah exactly he kind of he he's not worried about expressing himself I mean, and also in the trailer, there was um, hints that Dr. Connors knew more than he was letting on because he says, um, if you want the truth about your parents, come and get it, Peter. Yes, exactly, yeah. And again, deleted scenes. <laughs> it's, I know. It's frustrating. It's so frustrating. And again, there we got a repeat of a moment from the from the Raimi <laughs> film, the good reflexes. Yep. It's literally <laughs> the same line, you know. <laughs> but... um. But yeah, no, it's just it's frustrating because you get the sense from those trailers that like yeah they're they're doing something different, and then it just it just um, never happened unfortunately. I know ITV two loves to show this film when they're not showing <laughs> that when they're not showing the Daniel Craig bomb films they're showing this film. <laughs> a hot, a hot fuzz for the fuzz, yeah. time. Edgar Wright usually tweets about it when it's on ITV2. He says, Hot Fuzz on ITV2 tonight. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it. It, it was taken off Netflix a while ago. I think it's back on there now. But it, somebody tweeted him and said, Oh, no, can you stop this from happening? And he was like, Oh, yes. I'm sad to report that once Hot Fuzz leaves Netflix, you'll never be able to watch it again, except on DVD and Blu ray. And there's a four there's a four K uh, version of it coming soon, and it's on ITV2 oh, on, an, on and it's an IT, on ITV2 on an hourly basis, <laughs> and I believe it was one of the last VHSs ever released as well. And then oh, <laughs> yeah, so he was just like, uh, no, apart from those multitude of vo- viewing options, it'll never be available again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was like that when I think they took the new series of Doctor Who once off Netflix. Yeah. I think I commented saying, um, oh no, it's not like you can buy the DVD and Blu-ray box sets. Yeah. Or watch it on iPlayer. Or watch it on Britbox. Exactly. <laughs> or if they're, on about, if they're on about Classic Who, I'd have said, oh, it's not like you can buy, buy a DVD of each story for about £6 from HMV. Yeah, or go to CEX and save yourself a couple of quid and buy them used. <laughs> or buy them off me. Or buy them off me. I'm still selling a few DVDs. I was going to say, yeah, you're selling a few, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the struggle with me because I'm like, I, 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 I want to sell them because I need the space now that the Blu-rays are coming out. But at the same time, I spent years collecting them, and I'm kind of proud of it. So I'm just kind of like, yeah. oh, do I sell them? I, I don't know. Maybe one day, but not quite ready to part with them yet. So yeah, yeah, this is yeah. Going back to the idea that um, Peter would use his intelligence for bad, he inadvertently does create the lizard here. So, yeah, and he spends the rest of the film saying, "This is my responsibility. I have to now fix it." Mm, yeah, which is cool. I I like that. Yeah, because again, if he turned, if he wasn't on the right path, he could have actually been an ally to Doctor Connors mm. and help him turn the whole world into giant lizards or say you know i'm powerful we can all do this you can all be like me yeah exactly <laughs> the powers of an animal um and midtown high the way midtown high is represented here it reminds me a lot of the ultimate comics as well i just get the same tone from it the the same vibe from the school is just very very ultimate well, I, know the, uh, I know the the ultimate spider-man cartoon um, oh, yeah. That, yeah, that. Um, the voice actor for Spider-Man, he was in a um, superhero movie, yeah. ironically, as the parody of Peter Parker. He was, yeah. <laughs> I would say as well, I, th- I believe the actor's uh, Chris Zilka, I think, plays Flash. Um, he's my favourite Flash. Um, yeah, same here. Had. The he's um, great. Yeah, I know we've not got there yet, but the Flash from the MCU, it looks like Peter Parker would pick on yeah. him. Yeah. Like, that's supposed to be a bully? 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to believe, and it? it's just. I think this guy they nailed it because they gave him the depth that's there. We see yeah, later. True. It's not, it's not a huge amount of depth, but it's there. You kind of get the sense that this guy isn't just a one dimensional bully. He's um. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's great. And again, they add that bit at the end where he's got the Spider Man T shirt on, saying, "Dude's crazy." Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I love. Yeah, yeah, dude's crazy, but chicks dig him. And again, I just if Mark Webb maybe was allowed to just full creative control, just to have just to spend time with these characters, just spend spend time with this version of Flash, and uh, explore get to know him a little bit more. Was it true that boy who clearly has anger management <laughs> issues picks on the innocent, forces younger ki- kids to eat their vegetables, and has severe anger issues? Did you humiliate, humiliate him? <laughs> yeah? How dare you! <laughs> You have to pick up Aunt May, but how's he going to pick her up? He doesn't drive. Is he going to yeah. have a ride on the skateboard? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. It, I guess he just means like walk her home to make sure she's safe and stuff. Yeah, but it's, 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 so, it's just like uh, it's, it's a big city, New York. There's crime everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is. They're so charming. These two. Yeah, just, the, so the stu- yeah the stuttering and the you want to do this or you want to do that you know uh, people call it awkward but honestly it is so real have you ever tried to ask a girl like, oh, yeah. it is literally like this it's so real <laughs> it's so weird and it, it, it's beautifully awkward as well it's it, it, it's wonderful and it's um when they giggle to each other as well it fit you can buy that these two are actually falling for each other it doesn't feel forced they feel like they would they it's... would genuinely be together yeah, and as you say, if Mark Webb was given full creative control, it might have been... I mean, it kind of still is. It's that rare superhero series where I'm more interested in, say, the romance than yeah. the action of the villains. Yeah, and that would have been double down upon because um, 500 Days of Summer is an anti-rom-com. So it's like it's it's it's, it's a rom-com that kind of deconstructs the genre and uh, tells the story backwards. So the whole conceit of 500 Days of Summer is you you know that the relationship is doomed to start with and you kind of it, the film is out of order and it kind of tells you what happened and, and it, it's, a, it's it's brilliant and it, it shows how connected he is to humans it sounds really weird to say but um, yeah it, it just it, you can so tell that he's brilliant at this at directing this romance because it just feels so natural and these two are just phenomenal they are yeah and here we get the Coldplay music video. <laughs> Just pause the film for a bit and uh, watch the... <laughs> yeah, but um, I do like it, though. I do like the tone this strikes. This does just feel so kind of uplifting in a way. He's just practising to himself and... Um, yeah. The skateboarding sections do feel like a, a clothes advert, though, as you say. <laughs> I, I like when he's swinging on the on the stuff and like um, practicing his powers. But when that bit where he's just skateboarding there, it's just like, well, there's a fun fact about Coldplay. They cameoed once in Game of Thrones. Oh, did they? As, funnily enough, yeah. Funnily enough, as musicians. Oh, right. <laughs> I know Ed Sheeran did. Um, yeah. yeah. One of the, funnily enough, one of the actors said, um, so what do you do when you're not being an extra then? He said, oh, I'm in a band. And it was like, oh, nice, what they're <laughs> called. I, I, he was like, oh, nice, have you had any success? He says, yeah, I'm from Coldplay. He's like, oh, yeah, that band, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> I, I, Coldplay's best cameo in something is in Shaun of the Dead, hands down. <laughs> when he got, oh, they're in that. Yeah, they're, they're um at the end when they're uh, after it's all kind of blown over on the TV and they're like doing a charity concert for in aid of 
the the memories oh, yeah. of Z Day and stuff. <laughs> Oh, I'll say this about the year 2012. It's the year superhero movies decided every climax needs a portal in the fucking sky. Oh, yeah, sky beams. <laughs> good old Avengers. sky beams. This film, not exactly a beam, but it technically did it when it shoots all that yeah. um, toxin into the sky. And oh, every film from then on copies it. Yeah, and then Suicide Squad, long after the trend had died down, Suicide Squad still did it in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just like is there a producer out there who keeps getting attached to these films and has a huge fetish for yeah. it didn't Ninja Turtles did it do it a few years ago after this as well the Michael Bay one I think that did I it I think so yeah <laughs> it does look very stark tech doesn't it like from the first yeah. two Iron Man films where he's messing about with those Jarvis balls, whatever they the are. The hologram, yeah. When you're trying to get into your computer and you can't remember your password, pending, failed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this, um, I do like how there is an explanation for why the whole cross-species thing doesn't work on anyone else apart from Peter, because um, the second film establishes it's Richard Parker put his blood in the f- <laughs> the decay rate algorithm formula, yes. so only his bloodline can pass it on. <laughs> I mean, I know what the producers were saying when this film was green-lighted. We need to take the whole Spider-Man series back to formula. Back to formula? (laughs) Back to formula! (laughs) (laughs) Because I believe at this point, Laura Ziskin was still involved, and she'd been heavily involved on the Raimi films, so it's... um... Yeah. Sadly, I think she... she, It was either just after the second one or in between two films, she uh, passed away. Yeah. Yeah, I'd argue. Um, I don't mean to sound mean or anything, but um, I'd argue the biggest um, producer who was, you know, sticking his nose into everything was probably Avi Arad. Oh yeah, Avi Arad. Because it was him. It was him who wanted Venom for Spider-Man Three. Yeah. Probably him who also tried to push for a. Um, cinematic universe and it's funny he did work on Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk mm. uh, Avi Arad gets a lot of shit online and a lot of it is really aggressively mean but it it is true he he had he has a history of kind of just <laughs> ruining just making poor decisions yeah. for film yeah that's not cool but it's not doesn't justify sending him hate. Yeah, no, he he's. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I yeah. <laughs> Just to, to quote the big damn cast, which is an excellent podcast. Whenever you say Avi Arad's name, you need to sing it in the Adams Family tune. Avi Arad. <laughs> Avi Arad. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that the effects in these films have, um, they are phenomenal. Um, yeah, because a lot of them are practical. Yeah, a lot of the, especially in this one, I think the second film CGI looks so real. Like, it's hard to believe that a lot of that is CGI in the second one. And in this film, like, I love the bit later on when you see Peter swinging through the streets and it's all for real. It's all, it pra- is, it's yeah, all practically done. Incredible. And I miss that. I do miss that. This um, this shopkeeper here, he looks a bit like comic book guy. Ooh, 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 please take me fifty. Please take your job. Look, I don't want it. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> Since you are unfamiliar with sarcasm, I shall close the register at this point. Two oh nine is the proper price. <laughs> I noticed his name's T Bone as well. <laughs> T 
TV. Just realised this guy's never caught. <laughs> yeah, another film. Just... Oh, man, his killer is never. Yeah, uh, I don't know if he was if it was if he was ever going to find him in this film and it got cut, or if they were saving that for another film, or yeah. maybe again, maybe they wanted to leave him um, uncaught because they didn't want to be compared to the Raimi films. That's that could be my theory. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Um, it's just like they spend about ten minutes of the film doing the. Uh, having him like go after his uncle's killer and then they just drop it and they forget about it and it's very distracting yeah. um, I'd argue it's kind of explained in the film itself because um, when Peter puts on the suit it's not really to it's for his own vendetta yeah. rather than protecting the people but it's when Captain Stacy says um, he's not protecting innocent people he's a vigilante it's where Peter realises no I have to live by Uncle Ben and have a moral obligation you to do all moral these obligation things. obligation to do all those things. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... Yeah, there is... There is a different cut of this death, isn't it? It's, um... It's off-screen, and he finds him basically in an alleyway, doesn't he? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I know that ITV... When ITV2 show this, they substitute the footage with different um, takes to kind of... Because they often show it before the watershed. So it's um yeah. they cut it down quite heavily and I think they use more footage of Andrew crying as opposed to the blood on the but yeah. And I know this film gets criticised a lot because of how kind of uh, muddy it looks. But I think the way... The, the filmmaking here is pretty stylish. I think it's a nice... It is, it, yeah. It's a very nice looking film and it, it looks very filmic. Um, yeah. Yeah, personally, I think it's got the best... These two films have the best swinging of all of the Spider-Man films. You just feel like you're in the air uh, with him. Oh, yeah. The point-of-view shots in this film are, are fantastic. Mm. Yeah. I think I think the difference is, I think the the, uh, the Raimi films give you the spectacle of showing a, a man swinging through the city. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. These films show you what it's like to be with him. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And I love this moment coming up with Flash here. It's such a nice moment. And I'm surprised it was left in. I'm surprised Sony didn't cut this. I'm glad they didn't, because it's, it's, it's a wonderful little moment with him. That line, it feels better, right? It does reveal a bit something about Flash. Has he lost a relative and this is why Yeah. he's, so, he's angry and picks on people? It's him lashing out. It's, it's so yeah. good, yeah. I, mean, I just wish we'd have spent more time with him because he gets a quick cameo in the second one, but it's nothing. Let's cut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not in the film, is it? No, it was left on the cutting room oh, floor. Oh, God. <laughs> See, in my mind, it's just in the film. <laughs> yeah, And you buy his grief here as well. It's so well done. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's all down to... It really is all down to Andrew. He's, he's just so incredibly good at what he does. He is, yeah. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I think in all versions of the comics, I could be wrong, but he always catches Uncle Ben's killer, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, because that's, that's kind of his moment of realisation that oh shit I'm kind of guilty um, whereas yeah. in this his moment is seeing the uh, the uh, sketch report funnily enough in the second game the, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 video game they, rev they follow up on this lead and they reveal that it's all to do with um, 
funnily enough, Cletus Cassidy. And um, oh. he, and it's the Carnage Killer. And because uh, I believe, and I could be wrong because I've not played the game in years because it's shit. But um, <laughs> but they there's this bit I think where you find Uncle Ben's killer and his body's been mutilated in an alley by Cletus Cassidy. Oh, so it's oh, um, wow. so it's kind of cool. It's it's as as bad as that game is. It's kind of nice that it attempted to follow up on something that the film's abandoned. I love it when he falls through the roof, lands in that room, and one of those guys is like, I saw your face! I know what you look like! Yeah! It's like, what are you going to do, report him to the teacher? <laughs> I saw your face! I got my mum to tell the teacher! I know how to deal with bullies, I got my mum to tell the teacher. <laughs> I, I don't like That's a risk my hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't like that the film shows us that either. I, I just feel like yeah. have faith in us that it was we know what he's doing. Two minutes ago. Yeah, we yeah. don't need to hear the whole he has a star tattoo on his left hand, you know. It's... I like that as well, he walks away so cocky and then he just immediately falls through the roof. Yeah. Uh, that's fun. <laughs> I remember as a kid, this um, when I first saw this, because I, I would have been ten years old, maybe uh, ten, eleven years old, I think. Um, this kind of captured my imagination because I was like, "Oh man, I can make a Spider-Man suit with some sunglasses and a, and a and a beanie." You know, it was um, it's cool. I really like the homemade. Well, I did have it. a, uh, I did have a dress-up Spider-Man suit when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I feel like Nicholas Angel from Hot Fuzz. I can't remember a time where I didn't want to be an actor. Apart from the summer of 2004 when I wanted to be (laughs) Spider-Man. That's a shame, thinking I made a great superhero. (laughs) (laughs) And I I remember at the time a lot of people slagged off the suit in this. They were like, oh, it looks awful. It's it's a terrible Spider-Man suit. I like it a lot. I, I think it's it's a really interesting take on the suit. Yeah, I do like how it's... It does look like it was homemade, like he made it himself. Yeah, it looks ratty and not quite perfect. Um, and, I yeah, I really like it a lot. And thankfully, it's got its... It's, a pre- it's love again recently. People kind of have come round to it, and it's kind of quite loved now, to the point where... They added it into the PS4 game. Uh, yeah, I was going to say year. they definitely have. Yeah, I know some people when they added the Raimi suit, they said turn on turns on Danny Elfman music <laughs> starts swinging around the city. Yeah. Did he actually fall from a building here, or was this actually just CGI? I believe this is CGI. I don't think that they would have. Okay. I yeah. I mean, this film does turn 10 years old next year who knows maybe Mark oh, Webb nice. will too yeah yep. <laughs> maybe Mark Webb will release a director's cut but I doubt it well it happened for the 10th anniversary of Spider-Man 3 we got the editor's cut from it um, oh so it did yeah maybe yeah. it wasn't a director's cut but it was something different um, I don't know maybe I doubt it but it'd be nice especially if he is in No Way Home it's kind of renewed interest in this film um, yeah it would be a perfect opportunity perfect opportunity uh, but Jesus Christ, ten years old—that makes me feel ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, oh. like, cause I because well, I saw uh, this in the cinema, and it's just yeah. I mean, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and the Philosopher's Stone, Shrek. Oh Atlantis yeah, Boston, yeah. Uh, all twenty years old. Twenty years old. <laughs> Monsters Inc. as well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. God. I really like Dennis Leary as Captain Stacy. He's um, yeah. he's quite similar to Jameson, you know, in the sense that they don't like Spider-Man and thinks he's worse for the city. But um, again, here it's a bit more serious rather than um, oh, they come in for us. Yeah. He's a match to the city. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 different it's more take. toned down. It's a bit serious here. It's an, it's a very nice and interesting take. Yeah, different take. It's nice. 
and I like this. Um, I like in a minute we get the the kind of the two nerds. He overhears the two nerds going, "Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, the velocity vector and everything." Because people would be doing that. They would be kind of trying to debate the yeah. logistics of everything. Well, people do it do it now and make seventy two hour videos on it. True. Yeah. <laughs> Telling me why Disney doesn't understand lightsabers. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I hate this. They they cut. Do you remember that? Um, it was an early trailer, that, and it was it that was, incredible yeah. first person view with him going through the buildings and swinging. In the film, they cut it down to three shots. Yeah, they it's do. It's so thought, annoying. That's weird. I thought it lasted a bit longer. Yeah. In the trailer, it was like the whole last section was this brilliant first person bit. Um. And it, I, yeah, it's really annoying that they cut that down for the film. And again, I know the suit does get hate, but um, he was inspired by, as we saw earlier, um, you know, Olympic skiers, yeah. something like that. And um, yeah, it makes sense. He, it makes it's logistically possible to do it because it you know you need something you need something quite tight and skinny so you can flip around a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and no gips. No gips. <laughs> I remember in the in the uh, in the game they added a, a utility belt to it. They added like a because in the comics, early comics, he has like a, a a little belt, and they added that to this suit in the game, and it looked kind of cool. Mm. You know what he needs though? A motorbike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A spider cycle. Oh, God. <laughs> doesn't he right in Ultimate Spider-Man? Doesn't he have like a bad and evil Spider-Man on his shoulder? In like yeah. telling him. In in the show, it's like um, it, it, he has these voices, and it's the show is basically a Deadpool show, but for kids, and using mm, the name yeah. Spider Man. <laughs> I mean, I'd argue that, that sounds a bit more like Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove because <laughs> he has a devil, and a, he has an angel, and a devil. Yeah. I He's like number two. Look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> I love this bit as well. This is it, it, he's being a he's Spidey's being a dick here, and it's brilliant. Yeah, he is. Oh well, my weakness! Like, it's it, small lives. No, can't you? He's like, let me go. <laughs> it is kind of funny. It turns out this guy, he's an undercover cop, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but again, Spider-Man being a prick led to something bad happening, kind of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cop is so trigger happy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, America in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this bit is great. The, the, the practical effects of him climbing on the cars here and the swinging and the. Yeah, it's great. Such a shame it's all at night because, as I've said before, Spider Man looks great when he's swinging during the daytime. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> and the CGI that is there blends perfectly. It's so well done. It does, yeah. Yeah, it does amaze me that they went a more practical route for this yeah. when CGI was everyone was pretty much using it in 2012 by the 2010s it was commonplace to use to use CGI yeah. for nearly every action or big budget film but yeah I'm I really admire them for going practical I do and um that's why I mean I just miss it from the from the newer Spider-Man films because they it just there's there's none of that like kind of tactile texture um Oh, I love this scene with the uh, Aunt May. Please go to sleep. It's it's, it's 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 something out of a drama. It's just a brilliant bit of humanity. Yeah, it's kind of showing the more he's Spider-Man, the more he's losing as yeah, Peter exactly. Parker. Yeah, exactly. This is brilliant. It's, that's the golden rule. <laughs> this is great. I just this. Is so. This is where the film just shines. It's such a brilliant humor moment, and uh, it's 
Yeah, and he's, um, yeah. yeah, I love that. Take off the damn hood and look at me. And I do like it. He's trying to cover himself up because she, he doesn't want to see her upset. He doesn't want to see what's happening yeah. uh, to him. Yeah. That's why he's telling her to go to sleep. Just go away. You know, please don't look at me like mm. this. <laughs> I like the kettle whistling in the background as I if like this it, has yeah. reached boiling point. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's nice. And, it's, and this is because he's like a lost soul. Oh, really? That's That's kind of what Peter is in this film. Dark. They're gonna use a. They're gonna use testing on veteran on like um old yeah. people. Who never ask for it. That's just that is mean. <laughs> yeah, it is. Must be a Tory. <laughs> Again, I remember there's another deleted scene with um uh Doctor Connor's son, and uh, yeah, which. And it's, again, it's a great deleted scene because visually it shows the, why he would want his arm back, why he would want a world without weakness because yeah. he'd be able to hug his son again. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's and it just deepens his character so much as well. Yeah. I think what we've got is fine, but the deleted scene, yeah, just adds so much more. Well, that's that. That's it. What, what we've got is fine, but what we could have had could have been great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Also, they make a Godzilla reference, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do I look like the mayor of Tokyo to you? Um. It's quite... There's, um, there's a reference in The Lost World, Jurassic Park, where the T-Rex is in Sa San Diego, and you see people running away, you see a few Japanese people. Oh, really? Going, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's a close-up of them and everything. I've not seen The Lost World in years. I only saw it as a kid I can't remember much it's about it Ju say it it's better than Jurassic World hmm <laughs> inter interesting interesting yeah maybe I don't know um, again like it's been years since I've seen The Lost World so I I couldn't comment but I can't really remember much of Jurassic World either to be fair <laughs> That's a great chat up line. Do you like Brian Zeno? Do you like <laughs> <laughs> it's a fish. <laughs> I feel like you'd come to this address. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a line later where he says, um, uh, your doorman's pretty intimidating. Been cool. It would have been cool if that was Bruce Campbell. <laughs> the doorman. It would have been cool, yeah. Um... <laughs> Miss Stacy invited me for dinner, but not to come late. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for, for, again, funnily enough, I keep bringing up the game, but Bruce Campbell is in the game as a, as a, um, I believe, like when you do uh, trick races around the city, he's the announcer guy, like he's just in this giant blimp above the city, um, and it just feels weird that like Bruce Campbell, um, you know, an actor so associated with the Raimi series, is in something like this, uh, associated with the Garfield series. It's it's weird. He did miss it, but I do like that scene where he's uh, looking in the glass, he's holding his hand out, and it almost looks like he's got his hand it's back. It's nice, yeah, it's really good. It's a, it's a nice visual motivation for him, because obviously, straight after that, he's like, screw it, I'm getting the serum, yes. I'll try it myself. Yeah. Plus, 
because in the comics, Captain Stacy, from what I understand, wends his only child and he's a widower, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. That's uh, sort of the way it goes. Again, there's great subtleties in Andrew's performance because when she, she asks, "Do you have your suit in there?" He's like, "Suit." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And again, I love that socially awkwardness there, where he's like, with the flowers, it's great. They, they both are. I think that's wonderful about it, is she's not kind of, um... She, she's not, like, a, a perfect popular girl who's, like, not awkward yeah, at all. They're, they're both really awkward in their own ways, and I think that's what... That's what's great about it. Yeah. That reminds me a bit of Homecoming, <laughs> except obviously Captain Stacy is not the villain, That's but, nice. um, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> this is a... Oh, that's disturbing. It's like... A... <laughs> it's, like it's, it's like a big potato arm. Yeah, yeah. And it... <laughs> He's just taking it out of the skin as a jacket potato. And it's like his head and his arm is all like slimy and... Uh, mis- yeah. Kind of misshapen. <laughs> as if it's just come out of the wound. Yeah, yeah. It's really... Oh. It's a nice... I like the effect that they do. I like how I think he touches the light bulb or something and goes, oh, like, shit, that hurt. But then I think he starts laughing like, yes, I can feel pain in the sun again. Yeah, Yeah. it's great. And it's a nice detail. I like the, the, the fact that the arm is slightly... It sounds weird to say, kind of fatter than his uh, than his other arm because <laughs> yeah. it's just like it it looks like it like it's been regrown and it looks different. Um, would have been easy just to to cover Risa Finn's hand in uh, in slime, you know, but it actually looks like they put effort into it. <clears throat> yeah, this driver says you tweaking. Like, is that a drug reference? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You tweaking, man. <laughs> well, uh... What, does he think he's sticking a needle into it? Well, he has not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kid genuinely looks like he could be Emma Stone's younger brother. Yeah. Probably because of the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They um and they, they all these they feel like a real family. I think that's what I like about it. Yeah, and I do like that Captain Stacy. He's not an idiot. He does say he seems to know an awful lot about this. You you keeping back something that we don't know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and again, I do like when um Peter says, "Oh, I saw him on the internet," and he says, "Oh, case closed then." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only more people would act like that and not act like everything on the internet is gospel. Mm. <laughs> we need more Captain Stacey's in our <laughs> lives. And I like Gwen's face as well because she's just like kind of desperate to <laughs> to leave. It's yeah. so awkward. Just 
just going back to Uncle Ben's killer, imagine if in the second film he saw the ghost of Uncle Ben and he was mm-hmm. saying, you're going to catch my... So you're going to catch my killer yet, or what? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, I am the ghost of Dennis Leary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do like that. He does apologise, says, um, I didn't mean to insult you, it wasn't my intention. Yeah, it, it, mm. <laughs> it does rein Peter back in a bit. He's a, good, he's a good guy, yeah. He's just... Yeah. And I'm not sure, I don't know if they were dating before this. I think they might have met while they were on this and then started dating, but if it is... I think that's how it went, yeah. Yeah, if it is the latter, then um, you can kind of see them falling for each other in real life as well. I think that's what's so magical about it. Is that the, yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe they split up, like, after the second film, but, uh... Yeah. They did, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, it does amaze me again how far they've come in their careers because the first thing I saw Emma Stone in was probably super bad. That was 2007, and mm, yeah, now she's, an Oscar, now she's an Oscar nominee and winner. And casting for Andrew Garfield, the first thing I saw him in was Doctor Who. Doctor Who, yeah, <laughs> as, yeah. It's Frank, Frank, yeah, and um, yeah. Now he's been spot. Well, I think he said recently about Spider Man, you know. I think because it went by so quickly, he said, I never felt like I was Spider-Man. I just felt like I was um, cosplaying as him. Yeah, which is so tragic. Um, Because I don't know if you've seen that video, I think when they announced his casting, he (laughs) came out at Comic-Con in a Spider-Man costume, like one he just bought from the store or whatever. And he came out (laughs) and he pulled the mask off and he'd had this, it was just like, he had this speech prepared (laughs) and he read it out to the crowd and he was just like, um, it's an honour to me to to play a character that me- that meant so much to me as a kid and will continue to mean so much to me and mean so much to everyone else in this room. And he's like tearing up as he says it, and it's just like, oh man, he really was a a wonderful choice. Well, I heard they asked him to be Spider Man in the MCU, but apparently he might have said no. I I don't know. It's quite murky about that, isn't it? Um, I personally would have yeah. much preferred this series to be migrated into the MCU. Um, Same here, yeah. Than, than anything else. Yeah. Maybe have, um, in Captain in Civil War, have um, Tony Stark find a crying... Have Tony... Have Peter visit Gwen's grave, have Tony Stark pop up and say, bad job for you, kid. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just realised those deleted scenes where that alternate ending for the second film where uh, Peter meets his dad, he says the line, doesn't he? Remember, Peter, with great power comes he great does responsibility. say the line, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, now you tell them? <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. Wasn't this guy, I've forgotten his name now, um, I believe this, this gentleman was a very, very big actor in India. Um, like so the guy who plays Doctor Ra. Yes, I believe he was like their Tom, their ver- the, like India's own Tom Cruise. Like he was that big. Oh wow! Um, yeah. I mean, I'm familiar with um, uh, one of China's biggest name action films. Yeah, I think uh, what's he called? Chow Yun Fat. Apparently, he's really. Oh yes, yeah. He's really big in China. <laughs> But yeah, if he's really big in India, that's cool, I think. Mm, I think so. I think he's uh, passed away now, sadly. But yeah, he was... Um, he Yeah, he was like that Tom Cruise, so... So yeah, because this scene with him later is now cut, 
we're gonna just assume he dies here. I think that's what we have to. Yeah, because he throws the car off the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess so. It's a really nice the... visual of all the cars hanging. Yeah. But again, this does feel like it's come out of almost a different film to what we were having with the. Uh, uh, maybe go to sleep. Please go to sleep. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just... no, I'd argue it still feels like the same film because, again, we cut to um, the dad showing help. My kids. Yeah, trapped. this is great. And again, it's about relationships as well. Yeah. And um, the guy who plays the dad was he in, was he in ET? I don't know. C. C. Thomas Howell. Oh, he might have I done. Could be who, who was he in ET? Yeah. He might have been one of, you know, Michael's friends, you know, the guys on the bikes. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, I've never noticed that. And this was 30 years after yeah. E.T. <laughs> this, is a, this is a brilliant Spider-Man scene. I love this. The whole, um, put on the mask and make you strong, you know. Yeah, and again, it's not it's not a big elaborate action scene. It's just, again, it's, it feels very human. Yeah. It's like, um... It's like, let's get you out, okay, what's your name? Yeah. yeah. Put the mask on, it'll give you superpowers. Yeah, yeah, that just sounds like something Spider-Man would it's say. It's great, it's such a brilliant Spider-Man scene. Yeah. And it, 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 Andrew Garfield, again, he's just brilliant at, sell, at selling this to the kid. I mean, here's what would have been interesting if, um, say, they kept that ending in ASM two where um, his dad shows up. Yeah. What if I, I know it would have been ripping off Raimi, but what if Peter did say, "I had a father. He was called Ben Parker." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Could have been a nice. Um, again, just going back to the idea of him idolizing his dad, who was never around for him, and he's still yeah. thinking he's this great guy he could have accepted truth like even though you've come back you're still the guy who abandoned me yeah uh, ben, uh, Uncle ben and Aunt May, they looked after me they were my true parents so i'm sorry dad i'm walking away it would have been a nice kind of rejection of his of his kind of idolization of his father yeah and i like that spidey comes up there and he looks genuinely exhausted yeah. And again, I like this that he stays around because he never had that relationship with his dad. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who are you? Don't you mean your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> you know who I am. I do? You're a friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, I am Mrs. Nesbitt. <laughs> Yeah, so here we kind of get a little bit of kind of maybe what was going to be shown later of him looking like physically ill and exhausted when he turns back from the lizard. I like how at the end he actually does come back with the eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's a really brilliant um, end to that arc. I like how he keeps causing damage to the school, but no one's like, hey, <laughs> remember that guy who bent our football post, yeah. uh, destroyed our basketball court? Maybe he's Spider Man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
And it, it is surprising that I guess that Sony did, didn't try and cut these quiet scenes down further because of the amount they yeah. removed anyway. <laughs> That's what I like about this film. It says a lot with little dialogue. Yeah. You know, that's not your, that's not your job. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It's it's really nice. Again, I think yeah, because I know this film did get a bit of flack for not including "With Great Power Comes Great Responsibility," but I think you can get away with not using it if you keep the ideas of responsibility yes. in there. Exactly. And Peter is learning, yeah, it's my responsibility, I have to now fix this. Dr. Connors comes in and has the serum. He looks like he's holding a lightsaber. He does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> well, wish all bosses were like that. I gave everyone no, a right, up. yeah. I wonder, in the comics, does the lizard ever command an army of lizards? <laughs> I believe in one of his first appearances, it might be his very first appearance, the, the cover is him, like, um, pointing, and uh, a load of, like, crocodiles are coming towards Spider-Man. So it's like he's commanding oh, wow. the, the, the crocodiles. <laughs> In fact, with this, um, with the type of tone this film was going for, it would have been cool if um, Peter and Gwen were swinging through the city and it was kind of like the flight with Superman from Superman the yeah. movie. I, or a bit like, you know, Aladdin on the magic carpet. A whole new world sequence. Just yeah. Adam Singh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, it is often distracting here, though, because I am often like, "Well, now we're really we're like kind of solely dedicated to the lizard plot." Twenty minutes ago, were we not kind of really hammering home the the parents' angle and the and catching Uncle Ben's robber uh, killer? Yeah, uh, true. Uncle Ben's killer. Sorry, it just feels like it kind of loses itself at that point and kind of just moves on to this now. I like this. He in his spare time is running around yeah. dressed up like a giant dinosaur. <laughs> dressed up. Dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> Do I look like he has a dressing up box of different animals? <laughs> yeah. And I like that there's a hint at the end of this where um, Captain Stacy's like, maybe he has got something. Like he's not totally dismissive. Yeah, he thinks, okay, he could have a point here, but yeah. I'm going to... Yeah, it's like saying I'm still going to humor him. So, like, you go back to hanging out with the cit citizens of Tokyo. <laughs> I'll protect the citizens. <laughs> it's 
which would be a Captain Stacy spin-off. Yeah. <laughs> called New York. Called New York, where they uh, hunt down all the Spider-Man villains yeah. without Spider-Man. Kind of like Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> If anyone wants to follow some stuff, all they have to do is uh, follow the lizards. Follow the lizards. <laughs> Reward for proof. So, in an age of iPhones, no one took a photo of this. Uh, apparently not, no. <laughs> I could buy this if it was 2002, but 2012, yeah. come on. It'd be all over the internet. Especially by with now. the amount of Sony phones that they're uh, peddling in this film. The amount of product placement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is this camera Sony? <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, yes, it is. You can just see the logo on of the bottom course. of it. Now, this web here that he's spinning, technically, it was real. They were real wires. Yeah. But obviously, CGI to look like web, but. Yeah, he had to stand on those and balance like a tightrope, and they filmed that in a real, well, not a real sewer, but um, yeah, most of that set is practical. Set, there practical was real set, yeah. running water, yeah. And, it's what, and it looks great, and this was a big iconic image I remember associated with this film was the web he built. And it's cool, I like that because it's like a spider. It's that's yeah, kind exactly. of, That is how spiders often um, catch their prey, is prey will stumble Spinning onto the web, web and <laughs> they'll hear the vibrations and they're like, ah, food. I just want to know why has no one ever done a Spider-Man versus Ant-Man film? <laughs> spiders eat spiders eat ants, yeah, don't they? Yeah, that's true. Closest we got was Civil War, where he's climbing on him and he just goes, "Get off!" And again, this was a feature in the game at the time. You, it was like you you get certain missions, and there'd be uh, kind of you know br- uh, branching pathways, and you're, li- and you're like, oh, where did the lizard? Uh, not necessarily the lizard, but where did the bad guy go? And you'd have to kind of you could make these constructs and kind of listen for the vibrations in your controller as you uh, oh, okay. as you went across the different webbing, and it kind of tell you where to go. It was cool. That one lizard, like it, it, he's so he's strutting along there. He looks like the chill, <laughs> yeah, chillest dude are. around there. The way he looks at Spider Man, he's just strutting along. <laughs> the lizard's voice is a bit do. It sounds like a high pitched Sean Connery. <laughs> you stopped me once. Stop you me. won't stop me again. <laughs> Poor Peter Parker. <laughs> And I bet you're so stupid to leave a property of Bart Simpson <laughs> note on the kill. <laughs> yeah, that's just yeah, it is a little bit. I mean, what I know, he I know he's just kind of an outcast that plays to the beat of his own drum and stuff. But I've never seen anyone ever, especially not in 2012, still use label makers to put. <laughs> yeah, that's proper grim though when he cuts the I thing. Always... Yeah, I always cringe when he cuts his chest. Oh, yeah. I feel it. You can, yeah. Oh. He just does it with so little effort. Oh. It's really grim. It looks very cool. And I like when he comes out of this fight. He's like, "Oh man, that sucked." <laughs> That's sucked. a very Peter Parker line to say. It's a very Spider-Man line. And I like this one because he looks genuinely hurt, and uh, I mean he must stink yeah. being in the being in all that sewer water. He just, he just came out of a sewer. I'll go see my girlfriend. Yeah. I'm in perfect peak condition to go see. And he's her. like, oh well, yeah. She's the only one who can help him, but and she and yeah. she's like, oh yeah. Come on, come on, come on and sit in all my furniture, even though you stink. And my parents are probably going to smell you <laughs> from across the hall. Yeah. <laughs> I love this bit as well where um, 
she's all about the chocolate house <laughs> and he, yeah. he, he, she comes back in and he's just there smiling as a chocolate house <laughs> it's, it's so it's a brilliant little uh, little bit I like that as well. I have cramps, and he's just like, okay, okay, no, 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 say no more. <laughs> he's just like, desperate to move away. <laughs> yeah. It's like when he goes, he's like, whew. <laughs> this is a nasty wound. He needs to go to a hospital. <laughs> this isn't going to be fixed by your girlfriend putting a flannel on it. They are yeah. deep cuts. <laughs> I like how Gwen she is uh, she is you know scared for him because obviously he's out fighting crime and that's what his, that's what her dad does for a living so mm. yeah she's scared that this something horrible could happen to him yeah <laughs> it's a, again it's a change from the whole um, oh he's incredible I'm in love with him yeah yeah. <laughs> I apologise to viewers because you're going to hear this a lot, but in the deleted scenes, <laughs> uh, there is a scene where they're um, like on the top of a clock tower, like eating and also ha kind of having a date. But yeah. just realised it's in front of a clock tower, and she dies in a clock tower. <laughs> yeah, that is. I wonder if that was intentional. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I know there is later on when um, in the final swing he passes by the. I think it's the George Washington Bridge. And you can hear the spider, the spider sense sound effect go off, and that oh, in okay. the comics is where she dies. Is the George Washington Bridge? Uh, yeah, it is. So yeah. It's, it's that when um, when he goes through that crane and the kind of film slows down, you can hear the the spider sense sound effect. So it's like an interesting little Easter egg. It's like mm, danger might be around that bridge in the future. Didn't Sam Raimi say he liked this film? I think he said he liked both of them. Um, they, oh, good. They, somebody said in the in an interview, he was like, "Have you? Did you?" That well, they were asking about the MCU films, and um, they said, "Did you see the Mark Webb films?" And he was like, "Yeah, I saw them both. They were great." So that's nice. Yeah, um, I remember he said in an interview once that uh, it was kind of hard to watch those films. Not because they were bad, but it's like watching your ex date someone yeah, else. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like it. You feel like it's your baby, and you're seeing it handled by someone else. It's like it's, it's heartbreaking. Like I, the, he did an interview a few years ago about Spider-Man Four, where he was like, "Yeah, I think about it every day," and I was just like, "Oh no!" <laughs> he, he was just like, "Yeah, no." Every he says well, it's hard not to because every summer a new Spider-Man film comes out and when you have an unborn one it's hard not to think about it <laughs> it's like wow <laughs> and again this scene here it feels like a basically a cut down quickly edited version of um, the Dr. Rava scene that was in the that's in the deleted yeah. scenes because again this all this um voice in his head it feels very ADR it is Second very unit. yeah and it, you can tell something's been hacked up here yeah because it's this like this shot here where he turns to the camera and looks it's that's when he um yeah I think that's when he kills Dr. That, I believe what he's looking at there is Peter Parker yeah uh, sorry not Peter Parker Dr. Yeah. Ra Dr. Rather yeah it's um I that's who he's looking at but um yeah and that line that we just missed it as well is the whole "You're not gonna get in the way of my plans, Peter Parker." <laughs> it's just like, yeah, a bit clumsy. It's nice that they did that little bit just then of him having the lab coat on, though. 
like ripping it off because obviously yeah, that's the yeah, iconic yeah. look for the lizard is the lab coat <laughs> this um yeah apparently the stuntman who yeah i was just gonna say the stuntman who did the mocap for this yeah was called apparently <laughs> this um this fight here is very reminiscent of the end of uh the one of the first arcs in the ultimate spider-man comics and it the, it's the first time spider-man reveals himself is uh green goblin attacks the school and uh oh, okay. so yeah this is this is kind of very reminiscent of that Instantly knows how to make an explosive. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, plus, people's motivation, but I'd argue, yeah, he does have a clear one. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, he wants to cure the world of illness, it's just he's not got the best way of going about it. Yeah, he, he does. <laughs> he definitely has a clear motivation. Whether it's fully explored or not, I think that's another thing entirely, but it, he does, it definitely has a clear motivation. Yeah. Um, and again, so much of this is practical. Like it, it looks CGI, but um, a lot of uh, uh, bits of this fight are practical. Yeah, and I do like the quips here. Like, don't make me have to hurt yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> and the uh, oh boy, when uh, you hell of that. You know what's up? There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's so good as Spider. He really is. Yeah, yeah. Because Maguire, I felt his delivery with the quips was yeah. kind of hot. It's a lot more natural. His timing is a lot more natural. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you were going to do, as we say, a more relationship-driven Spider-Man film that Mark Webb is known for doing with Five Hundred Days. What villain would you have had? Well, that's it, isn't it? Um, I kind of Black Cat. Maybe, yeah. Black Cat would have been a very cool choice, actually. Yeah, um, I, I honestly a similar tone to Sp- Spider Man Homecoming. Maybe we, you have like black market dealers and uh, and the vulture, yeah, probably, maybe. Yeah. yeah, but um, but you know, because yeah, that's focus. kind of the problem. Yeah, at the heart of it, um, a lot of Spider Man stories are romance driven and character driven. But yeah. again, a lot of his villains are very out out there and very surreal yeah which works in comics because you have so much time to breathe and room to tell the story works a little bit more difficult on film to do that best Stanley cameo here oh yeah what well, yeah this is an amazing love it. <laughs> it's so funny I've, and it, it's yeah. so many people um, love that as well yeah it does um Felicia is it Felicia Hardy yes. her name real black cat's real name does she ever become a love interest for Peter Parker uh o- often yeah um there's there's very that they've had sort of on and off flings it's uh kind of like Batman and Catwoman almost yeah that could have worked for a relationship driven Spider Man yeah. film like. Does he choose to be with Gwen and have a life of responsibility, or does he choose to be with Black Cat and whatever the hell he wants? <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's um, that's it, isn't it? Uh, that is actually explored very nicely in the um, in the Spider Man Two video game uh, from two thousand and four, because okay. uh, th- there are missions with Black Cat in there, and because uh, that film ad- that game adapts the film's plot, but also adds in these Black Cat sections. So, like, we get the scene where MJ proposes to. Or MJ agrees to marry John Jameson, and then Black Cat appears as Spidey's kind of sulking, and uh, and she kind of shows him that he can have more fun and be let loose with his responsibilities. And she's just like, "Look, have more fun. You you you're a superhero. You swing through the city in red and blue tights. You can do whatever you want." And he kind of gets tempted by that, and then that kind of arc in that game resolves itself. He's just like, "No, I, I can't. This this is my responsibility." But it's um, you could have explored that. It's, it's a very nice story um in fact in ultimate spider in the ultimate spider-man comics when black cat meets spider-man she like she finds him really attractive so she's like meet me on the me- uh, okay. meet, meet me on the building and you know we'll have some fun <laughs> so they get down to it they get down to business and she kisses him and she's like wait what pulls off his mask <laughs> realizes it's a 15 year old kid 
and just throw oh, and just okay. throws up and there's just a panel of her of her vomiting because she's just like oh my god you're a kid what is what am i doing and, it's just, and she just leaves him there on the rooftop and it's just it's brilliant So yeah, around this point, like he gets in the deleted scenes, he gets like tased or knocked out by uh, by Doctor Rather, and it's, uh, it's this whole section where he finds out about his parents. All of this out for the world to see. Yeah, yeah, that's it's just like oh, press here to learn about the villain's plan. I like that as well. Uh, we have confirmed sight of the lizards heading towards the city. What about Spider Man? I want that Spider Man off the street. It's just like priorities. Like yeah, priorities. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we have the lab coat again, which is nice. Yeah, it's cool. I know a lot of people have said he looks like Gumba from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um. <laughs> Oh, it looks a bit like um oh what's he called Os- is it oscar from sesame street the one who lives in a bin <laughs> oh yes yeah <laughs> just like that. wow the cops actually did something yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just to show what the toxin will do if he isn't stopped. Yeah, because you do see him turn into li- lizards, but they're kind of forgotten about. Surely they'd be rampaging across well, the city exactly, a little bit. Well, exactly, and there surely be lingering traces on them, right? So I, I don't know. It's um, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, this whole thing about trying to turn everyone into lizards—it just sort of. Uh, I don't know. It it just doesn't seem to gel with a lot of the rest of the film for me. I suppose, yeah, they did want to play it a little bit safe just by having, well, Hero has to stop villain now. Yeah, so yeah. Go. <laughs> Japanese people are like, happens all. <laughs> <laughs> Helping him. <laughs> Gwen, you can't be in there. You've got to hang off the edge of the thing, so I have to save you. <laughs> you yes, can't say they eat over No, yeah. See, more of that brilliant first person shtick that uh, yeah. we've got more of. Yeah, and him there with the helicopter. It's a great. Yeah, great image. It's about Batman that's those storm sticks. Yeah. <laughs> I like the noise as well. Like he moves slightly on the ground. You can hear the electricity. His face. Yeah. That's a, That's great. And it seems like he's waiting for them to take off his mask and 
act. Yes, exactly. It's it's really cool, and I love that when he does, it's just this instant, like you hear the spider sense sound effect, then boom, he's up. It's yeah. really cool. Have those boys come back from the second film? We found something. We won't <laughs> tell nobody. <laughs> And I like, I, I've mentioned it a few times, I like how beaten up he gets during this. Like, he's always got scratches on his face and bruises, and it's just like... It's yeah, cool. true. There is an unusual suspect did raise a point in this, and it is it is a good yeah. point. Uh, so he closes up the wound in a minute, but, but the bullet's, the still, bullet's in still in there, and it couldn't have been a through and through, because he'd have to yeah. close up the other hole as well. If you left the bullet in there, oh, that'd, yeah. that'd damage you. That'd, that'd be pretty bad. Or maybe, um, maybe it just skimmed his left. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. This is the music's really horrific during this. It's really quite scary. This scene. Yeah, the yeah the, piano, it's like the, the strings. Thing. Yeah, it's really really cool. Sniff. <laughs> sniffing glue. <laughs> I picked the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. You, do, you should be hanging off a building screaming for your life. <laughs> yeah, I love how the distance is... Um... The, yeah, this whole payoff with the crane guys, it's very nice. It's a very well done moment. I feel like how the city is helping him. Again, it is kind of a Raimi repeat, but they're not throwing stuff with the lizard and me like. Spider-Man. Yeah, no, oh. it is a Raimi repeat, but it's one that works quite well. Like it's just a nice little bit in this context. Yeah, and I, especially mm-hmm. because it's been built up, I think it'd feel a bit weirder if um, we hadn't had that bit with the kid earlier. Um, but the fact yeah, that we had that true. bit with the kid is nice. It shows the trust, and it's it's a really sort of a, a kind of fist pump moment, really, when it happens. Mm-hmm. It's a nice contrast to uh, Captain Stacy, who sees him as a vigilante, yeah. whereas here, not the average citizen who may see him as a hero. Yeah, for sure. I 
love the music here. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. very uplifting. It's God, James great. Horner's score is so good. And I even I haven't spoke about it actually. I like the little puffs of smoke that come out of his web shooters. A lot of people don't, but um, oh, yeah, that, that yeah I quite like it. Mm-hmm. It shows that they're kind of rough around the edges, mechanical. They uh, it's cool. I like it. Funny how in the third film he had to stop a car yeah. helping him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the swinging's done so well because you see an evolution of it as well. It is, yeah. I love the look of New York. It's even though it's again it's at night. The lights just make it look very bright yeah, and colourful. Yeah, alive, yeah. There's a different move between each crane Yeah, almost. yeah, it's... Um, it's style. It's, it's very great. stylish. Why does he go in by himself? Why doesn't he take back up? <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, yeah, well. Classic movie mistake. Yeah. Cops never taking so back up. So he can up. be the, the film's sacrificial lamb. <laughs> yep. I like that line as well. Like, yes, I do understand. Your boyfriend is a man who wears a mask, and goes. And he's like, it reminds me of that line from um, Age of Ultron, when he's like, uh, "The the city <laughs> is flying, and I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. He grabs him in, just throws him off like yeah. a doll, and I love the slow mo there. It's great. Cool down, <laughs> Chill out. It's about my puzzle. <laughs> I'm out. It's you who's out, Lizzie. Lizzie. Out of your mind. <laughs> I like when he takes the mask off as well. He looks like he's in genuine pain. I will say this is probably a um, good time to mention it. This uh, this is probably the single-handedly mo- the worst cinema experience I've ever had going to see a film. Um because I probably should have mentioned this at the start, but the the first five minutes of the film were played because people in the cinema didn't know the film had started, so they were just talking and shouting and screaming. It was it was terrible, terrible experience.
I will say that the, the Ganali device going T minus 30 seconds is a little bit sort of, that's a classic uh, classic comic book thing, but <laughs> <laughs> pretty cheesy, but uh, I don't mind it. It's about to say, yeah. <laughs> oh, his face here is a bit, <laughs> hi guys. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm going to use this every <laughs> The CGI there, like the human face coming through the lizard, looks a little bit. Yeah. Remember, this was in all the trailers as well. I like he's still got fangs as well. He's sort of human, but he's still got fangs. It's cool. He does, yeah. Yeah. I like how I like how his how yeah. his arm fades away. He starts to cry. It's it is just the tragicness of him. The tra <laughs> the tragedy <laughs> of Dark Darth Connors. The wise. <laughs> and I, I like this. His first thought as well is the captain. You know. Yeah. So nice. So it looks like snow almost. The 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 particles in the air. Nice atmosphere. Yeah, it does. And and yeah, that line of the captain showing that Connors is regretful for his actions. Again, I felt it would have hit home a bit more if they established that the lizard was pretty much a separate yes. personality. Yeah. <laughs> And again, maybe in, in say it with me in the deleted scenes, <laughs> um, deleted may, you scenes. know perhaps <laughs> I think that probably would have helped because you see him with his family and stuff, which is like a disconnect um, between him and the lizard. But because that's not in there, you don't really yeah. get a, an adequate sense of it. But leave Gwen yeah. out of it. That ending is quite controversial, mm. but... But they establish in yeah, the second film, they say, we, you know, it's not his yeah. choice. And... But you do wonder, has, would Peter have learnt any... Has Peter really learnt anything from Uncle Ben and Captain Stacy dying? Like, I think it's Sam Gavin who put it best, like... How many people have to yeah. keep dying for this guy to get the message exactly. of responsibility? That's my problem. I think if I I like the whole um, yeah, but those are the best kind. I like that. Like on the level of these, this is going to have yeah. tragic consequences for Peter. But because we never got films after two, you don't really yeah. explore the consequences of that and how he learns that. Um, so I think that's the problem with it. At the time, <laughs> I think it. it it wasn't really an issue, I just think, because of the possibilities of what they were going to do with it, but of course. Um... I mean, what would they have called it if they did have a cinematic the universe? SCU. The SCU. <laughs> the well, Spider Man. Of course, now Sony's new cinematic universe is called the Spunk. So... Yeah, Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel characters. So, the Spunk. Oh. Mm 
Not like how they don't. Yeah, don't exactly. Yeah. Would well, it be nice to see him in the sequel? <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't just have yeah. him in the MCU since the six. I like the eggs bit. The the eggs payoff is really nice. Yeah. And it's just a um, yeah. kind of dorky way of saying, I'm so sorry for... For all of us, yeah. For being it's like nice. this. And it's nice. It's set up really well, and it's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's that perfect... So it, it's, you know, it's it's a classic. They teach you, they teach you this all the time in... In I guess film school is like the classic three three thing in the script. You set up an idea, mm-hmm. you remind people of the idea, and then you pay that off. And this film does that. It's, it's a classic storytelling yeah. technique, and it works. Yeah. Another funeral scene. Yeah. The MCU have not had a funeral scene yeah. so far, but into the Spider Verse. It kind of did, didn't it, with the quote unquote death? Yes, you of see the legacy of that he left and stuff, and the the memorial. That's it, yeah. The scene, yeah, the scene with the whole pouring rain—it looks like something out of an it indie does, yeah, art and house. It does, yeah. It's again, it's Mark Webb, I guess, putting some personality into it. Yeah. And this is him rejecting her as well. It's um, yeah. Yeah, and I love that. The if you've been, it shows, um, yeah. Like he can't answer that. He can't say I wasn't. Like, she, yeah, off. she's like my my dad yeah. died. You know, I can't work with, where have we been? And Emma Stone's so good at this. She's just, she's excellent. <clears throat> and the whole everyone was there but you. Yeah, that yeah. line hits. Just yeah. Just the night even further. <laughs> and he's just like, Look, I can't do this. I can't do. This. Although the line coming up is like, <laughs> is a bit laughable. It, if there's one thing you are, it's good. <laughs> it's <a funny laughs> way to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you don't think he's good, you can get fucked. <laughs> I love how he's trying not to make eye contact with her. It's like, no, can't do this. Yeah, do it's this. nice. Like, he doesn't want to see her, yeah. <laughs> and I like that she's not stupid. She figures it out. She's like, he made you promise, didn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm, it's great. House looks um, quite posh. It does, yeah. A working class family. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll give home. Co- I'll give the MCU Spider Man credit. Yes, they that do is what true. They live in I do like home. that, yeah. Honestly, I think with the way Garfield looks. As a um, probably Spider Man Inc. already, yeah. I spider and because things like uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman, say he's a year yeah, or two like into being Batman, and I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad they're get because I think even if you live under yeah, a exactly. rock, you know yeah. what. 
I love that this whole ending. I love the whole um, him list. We hear we hear pepperings of the voicemail throughout the film, but this is where we finally hear it all, and it's great. In the Raimi films, where like, in this film, there's no, no yeah. internal monologue, is there? Which he was trying yeah. to be more like a comic book, and um, yeah, exactly. There, what's the time, don't they? And uh, having it be an actual message from Uncle Ben, it's lovely, is a and really the nice whole update, thing, of, I um... think. That it, you know, it explains why this Peter is the way he is. That 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 line where he's like, y- your whole life you've been living with so many unanswered questions. And it's no wonder he is like the way he is. Yeah. No. Mm, yeah. And this bit with the flash and flash and um, the Spider-Man T-shirt as well. It's great. I like how that teacher's giving a lesson. Yeah. Fiction, it's all about- Who am I? It's nice ending with a little smile as well. It's, uh, it is like, uh, what's going to happen beyond this, you know. Uh, The film's not quite finished yet, but me and Isaac are running a little short on time, so we're going to end it there. Uh, We're really just missing the credits out. So, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. We'll see you next time for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Which should be a very interesting commentary indeed. Uh, In the meantime, go subscribe to Isaac's channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.